happening. Um, and Jamie told me that a uh, few of you have asked to uh, talk to me, so felt it would be best here to me to come in and answer your questions. If you've got any. We have many. <laughs> um, can you preach stability, obviously, as a general manager? Um, things are not going very well with your hockey team. Do you believe in firing coaches? You've never fired a coach in midseason. And does he deserve even to be looked at by fans? Well, uh, Jim, I don't know if believe is the right word. Um, you know, no, I haven't fired a coach midseason. Um, I don't believe in it, I guess. This but it doesn't, I, but I, I also understand that there are times when, uh, when, when possibly it needs to be done or it should be done. Um, in terms of signing or trading for player, have you ever gone out and got a reclamation project and said it'll work on our team and how strong does the leadership group need to be to go out and get a player who is, say, a reclamation project? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't, you know, I've been a manager for a long time, so um, I, I think the answer is yes. You know, you, you know, I think you're talking about a player that hasn't worked out somewhere else. I don't yes. know for a reclamation project because these are, um, you know, so it, it, when a situation doesn't work out somewhere else to give someone another opportunity, yes. Do I believe in it? Yes. And how disappointed are you with where the Oilers are right now? Well, very. You know, I think if you look at the season on December, we were looking yesterday, December the 2nd, we were first overall in the National Hockey League. Um, what's today, January 10th or 11th? You know, so a lot's happened in six weeks. Um, we were, what, 16-5, and five, and then we've gone 2-9-2 uh, two, and two in the last... Uh, so the first 21 games, we were first overall in points percentage. And then the last uh, 13, 2, 9, and 2, I think we're, we have the second worst record in the National Hockey League over, the, over that 13-game span. So it's, you know, we've gone from one extreme to another extreme. So, um, you know, I'd, I'm not, to, honest, to tell you the honest truth, I'm not, I believe we have a good team. Uh, I obviously built the team. It's, it's, it's uh, it, whatever happens is on me. Um, I think, again, I, I'm not really sure where we're at because it's been two, two extremes that have been so far apart. You know, and I think that in the 16 and 5, um, our special teams were a major factor. We were, we were, we were probably near the, the top of the lead or, or, or at, it was extremely good. And now in the last uh, 13 games, I think we're 18% in the power play and I think we're 60, 68% in the penalty kill. So, you know, if you're, if you're combined totals, um, power play and penalty kill, if, it's, if it adds up to, say, 105 to 110, you know, you're, you're, you're right near the top of the league, and we were probably 140-ish, you know, the first 15, 10, 15 games, which is unsustainable, and now, you know, it's, it's 68 plus 18, we're, you know, it's, it's 86, so it's, it's got to be probably near the bottom of the league. So I think that, uh, you know, that would be one example of, of uh, what's happened here the last 13 games. But again, I'm not sure where we're at because we've been, we've been, we've been in such extremes, um, the first 21 games versus the last 13, that, that uh, I'm not sure where we're at. But I believe we have a good team, but, but it's been too extreme. So it, it, it's, 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 it's been hard for me to really get a, an understanding of where we're at. Thank you. Ken, um, when you were in Detroit, uh, you know, Dan Cleary got an opportunity and Dan had talked about, like, you know, he had some drinking problems and he, and he cleared that up. Zach Cassian here in Edmonton went through the rehabilitation program of the NHL and it worked out for him and he's been a lot better of a person first. You talked about people. Like, if you're going to have a conversation with Evander Kane, would it focus more about making him a better person first? The player on the ice is good. Seems to be the, you know, he's got some issues more person-wise that don't have to do with on-ice hockey. I think I, I think Jason, it would be you know first to get an, under, get an understanding, you know, of, of um, everything that's gone on in, the, in that person's life, or, or you know, not their whole life, but but get an understanding of what's going on, um, and then trying to 
you know, it's like I said to Jim, I guess the answer to your question, I believe in second chances. You know, I, I, it's hard to be perfect. In, 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 we're all people. We all make mistakes. Some make big mistakes. Some make little mistakes. But it's hard to be, it's hard to be perfect. And um, I think if somebody makes a decision or does something in their life and they make a mistake, I think they have to, you know, try to... Um, you know, learn from it and and try to change and uh, and and, and uh, should be entitled to a, a second opportunity once they once they do some of those things. When you look now, go to the, your team and you mentioned the two extremes. Uh, the one area goals against five on five has been an issue for the club for a long time. Obviously, you know Mike Smith's injury uh, derailed the team a bit. But your goaltending, you've got a young guy in Stuart Skinner who played here. He had a nine sixteen save percentage. He's been down in the minors playing great. If you can't make a trade, do you have to try to solve internally? And does Stuart Skinner a guy that you're looking at giving more of an opportunity? I think first off, um, you know, if we're just talking about the goaltending, uh, you know, we got to get Smitty. You know, I'm going to go back three years. When I became manager here, we, we, I, you know, as the manager, made a decision to, to, to sign Mike Smith. Obviously, Dave Tippett, the coach, had a relationship with him. And I thought in the 1920 season when we had, what, 72 points or 74 points with 10 games to go, that our goaltending played, you know, the way it was built. I think early on, Tip went two games for Smitty, two games for Koski, and they rotated. And I think they basically played half the games, thereabouts, over the, over the 72 games. And, um, you know, when, when Koski went, kind of slipped a little bit, Smitty carried the load and vice versa, but it was a, it was a good tandem. And then... You know, last year, you know, in a 56-game schedule, you know, Smitty got hurt, and we had to overplay Koski for the first, I think he played 10 of the first 11, 11 of the first 12, and then Smitty came back, and Smitty carried, carried the bulk of the load. I thought he had, a, I think he played 35 of the last 46. But the schedule was last year, it was a different schedule. We'd go play two road games in Winnipeg, and we'd fly in the day before, and you'd play a game, and you'd have an off day. So it was an easier schedule. Now it's a more difficult schedule. Uh, I don't think he can, he can, you know, and I say he, most goalies, uh, had, have, it's hard to play 35 out of 46 with an NHL the way it is today. You know, we, we get into game three, and I, I, going into this season, that was our thought. You know, it's going to be Smitty and Koski. They were going to go, we're going we're gonna to ride the two, and one's going to get hot for a little bit, and the other one's going to slip. And, but but they probably play a similar amount of games, and whenever somebody gets on a roll, we'll go with them. Game three, Smitty got hurt. Um, we thought it was nagging at the time, and you know, so we we ran out Koski for for a lot. There was still an unknown about Stu Skinner, and I'm going back to October. You know, so um, there was you know we wanted to get off to a good start, um, and then we played Koski a lot. We kept thinking that Smitty was on the horizon. But it was a nagging injury, and it kept nagging at him, and kept nagging at him, and kept nagging at him. We eventually worked Stu Skinner into the mix, and I think that I thought that Koski and Stu Skinner did a, a, a really good job in, uh, you know, in that sixteen and five. I mean, other than two games, they were they were the go the guys in net for sixteen and five. And then I think that over the last thirteen games, we've just sort of come derailed. We haven't played good enough defensively. Um, I think everybody's got to play better. I mean, it, you know, probably our goaltending, our team play, our special teams. We've got some individuals I believe, I believe can play better over the last 13 games. So, you know, Smitty's back now, you know, after Christmas. I think we're going to come out. We obviously got to we play one game here in two weeks. It's, it's against Ottawa on Saturday. We're going to have some practice time here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, play a game and then practice next week, next week Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think we got to get back to, 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 to Smitty and Koski. And but saying all that, Stu Skinner's in a good spot. He's playing every night down there in Bakersfield. I've been watching every night, every game on the computer. He's playing real well. We know what he can what he can do here. I think he's an NHL goal in the goalie in the waiting or making, however you want to want to do it. But I think it's, it's he's in a good place right now that he's playing playing lots. Let's get going here and see what what uh, how we get off how we get going um, after this break. Okay, so how long though can you wait? If you have a young goalie who's playing well and you're not getting the goaltending you want, like is it two games? Is it four? Do you, like how long before you have to make that change? Jason, here's my here's 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 what as the manager, I like to my, I think it's my job to protect people, okay, to make sure that they are ready. 
play the kids, 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 play the kids. Then when the kids make mistakes, we don't like the kids, we don't like the kids, we don't like the kids, get different kids, and the kids go elsewhere, and they have success that you thought they were going to have here. I'd rather wait a little bit too long than move too soon. Um, you know, and, 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 and uh, you know, I think that, 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 so now how long could I wait? I'm going to watch, I'm going to evaluate. I mean, it's, I mean, it, I, we have 48 games to go. I understand we got to hit the ground running. Now that you, you can't, I can't judge one game. You can't just, if you lose a game, all of a sudden start to make, you, I got to watch some games. I, I can't put a number on it, but I got to watch some games. I got to see how we play. I got to see how the, how, how everything goes. Um, but I think everybody in that every, everybody in that room understands that we've got 48 games to go, and we've got to we've got to hit the ground running here and 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 start to put something together ASAP as soon as we get going. Hi Ken, over here. Yeah. Uh, your your philosophy on not uh, replacing a coach in in mid season is that uh, what do you base that on? Is it just too disruptive or too easy, or you just haven't had occasion or reason to ask? Here's how I analyze it, Rob. You know, I hired Tip. In, in my mind, we made the playoffs the last two years. You know, um, the year before we got here, I think the team was 28th in the league in points. You know, under Tip's leadership in, in year one, we were in second place in the division. The pandemic hit. We, we lost a play-in series against against Chicago. But but if there was no pandemic, we were making the playoffs. Um, last year, we were second in the in the North. Um, we lost three games in overtime against Winnipeg, and certainly we got swept. But but we've been in the playoffs two years in a row. On December the second, we were first place in the National Hockey League overall. We've had a bad five weeks. Um, there's been seven coaches here in ten years. You, you, you can't just keep whipping through coaches. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, at some point in time, you know, I think the coach, I think the team plays hard. I, I mean, our last game was against Toronto. It's, you know, you look at the record, I look at, you know, it's, the, the, I, I break it down. You know, the, the, against Toronto, it's 2 2 with, what, seven minutes to go. We take a penalty, they score, and they thought it was a pretty even game. And, you know, we're, we lose an overtime in the island, and we were up by a goal in, uh, in, uh, in Jersey, and they tie it late, and they beat us in overtime. And we're 2 2 late in the second period in St. Louis. And, um, you know, the games, I think Boston were 2-2 were with something with three minutes to go and we lose a face-off in our zone and, 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 and Boston scores a goal. So we're, it's 2-1 with three minutes to go against Carolina in the third period. I think it's 2-1 with five minutes to go in the third period against, against the LA Kings. Like, we're not getting... We, we've given up the first goal, I think, 20 out of 24, 21 out of 25 games. So it feels like the last six weeks we've been sort of chasing the game. But even even falling behind, even with the special teams, we seem to find a way to play our way back into the game. So I, 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 see, I feel that we've got a team that's, that's competitive. Uh, you know, they're competing. We're just, we're just not winning. I, and I understand we're in pro hockey and we're judged on wins and losses and we haven't won enough. But I believe that the coaching staff is, the team is playing hard. They're competing every night. Um, we've got a bit of a break here. I, and I hopefully, you know, talk, talk to Tip and talk to a few of the players, make a couple tweaks, get, 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 every, get people out of COVID, get our team back and... Let's see how we can do. But I think, I think again, I think if you look at Tip's run as coach here, it's been a bad five weeks. Or December second to it's what five and a half weeks. It's been a bad. It's been it's been a bad thirteen games. It's been a disappointing thirteen games. Um, but but the other two years and the disappointing playoff series against Winnipeg, disappointing play in. I guess that was a funny. Th Playing in the middle of July or the middle of August. I think that was a funny, funny thing. But. Uh, so I, I think it's been a bad, it's been a tough five weeks. H having said that, is there a wins and losses tipping point, or is is tipping going to coach it? We're going to start to win. Can't say for certain, but I think we're going to start to win. I believe I believe in the coach. I believe in the team. I believe in the leadership of the team. Uh, I believe in their determination. Um, I think that we've 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 found lots of ways. Not found, but the other team is 
won games here and we haven't, and that's pro sports. And we're going to, if we can win a couple of games and get our swagger back a little bit and feel good about ourselves and start to uh, ride the wave, I think right now th th it's going downhill in the wrong direction and we've got we've to turn this thing around. So I believe we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get going here. Hi, Ken. Yeah. Whether it's goaltending or an, another position, if you do need to look externally for uh, guys that will help, what is the what's your sense of a, a trade market right now and how has it been affected by the fact that a lot of teams like you maybe have had gaps in the schedule not played a bunch oh reed i've i've talked i've talked to a few managers the last week um you cover the league i mean how many trades of consequence have gone on in this league since october since the season started uh, not many i mean there's been the odd trade but you know, and there's other teams struggling besides us. We're not the only team struggling. I mean, so I think the reality is the solution has to be in 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 the, either in that locker room or or you know somebody from Bakersfield. Um, I am working the phones, um, but for right now today, I think that, that that the solution has to be in that in that locker room. And again, I. It's like I said, it's, the team was first overall December the 2nd. Now we're, we have the second worst team in the league the last 13 games. So I don't know where we are. But we're, I don't, we're better than what we've been playing. I believe that. And um, I don't know that there's any I could go out and make some, some big trade to kind of turn the things around. But I am, I am talking to teams. All right, and I know you got asked a couple of questions about players getting second chances. So I'll just ask about the specific player here. Yeah. What's your level of interest in Evander Kane? Well, I've talked to his agent. I know his agent's Dan Milstein. I know Dan very well because he was Pavel Datsuk's agent. Um, and I had lots of dealings with, 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 uh, with Dan Milstein. So I, I have talked to, uh, to Dan Milstein, his agent. You know, I would say to you as, the, as a manager, it's my responsibility to, you know, investigate every situation, um, you know, talk to managers. So um, I, have talked, I have talked to Dan. Uh, Ken, just back here. Yeah. Um, you've uh, since you've come, you've really wanted to improve the depth of this team, and and, and especially in the bottom couple of lines. But without McDavid on and Drysaddle on the ice, this team is getting outscored two to one. What what do you think is the solution there? Why has this happened this year? Excuse me. Well, I, I think Daniel, you know, part of it is is. Um, we got to keep the puck out of our net better. I don't know where we are in goals against. Are we twenty fifth or something? So, you know, I'm going to reflect back on my time in Detroit. And, you know, in 92, 93, 94, um, we, we scored lots. We gave up too much. And then in the playoffs, we couldn't score. And we were, we were out in the first round. So I think that we've got to get a little bit more offense out of the bottom part of our roster. But I also think that we've got to buckle down and keep the puck out of our net a little bit more. So I think it's it's a combination of the two. I don't think it's just we got to get more secondary scoring, more secondary scoring, more secondary scoring. I think that we've got people in that locker room that can score more than what they've scored to this point in time. Um, and I also think that, you know, I think our defense, I think we've played better defensively the last while. Um, and that's, you know, to Rob, like, that's why I believe we're going to get this thing going and turned in the right, in the other direction because, because of the way I, the way we're, we're playing. I, I think that we're going to get it, going to get it turned, but can we get, you know, can we get a little bit more offense out of the, the you know, after Connor and Leon, probably everybody can. They've, they've, some have gone good, and then they've gone dry, and other guys haven't really got it going. You know, some people haven't scored, but I think that, that I think that there's there's more goals in there. Um, but I also think that we have to keep the, we have to do can't be 25th or I, I don't know the exact. I didn't look the last day or two, but but we're in the bottom third of the league in goals against. Certainly, we know we've got to do a better job of keeping the puck out of our net. And given where Connor and Leon are in their careers and the types of seasons that they're having, they're right in the primes of their careers. Do you have to be all in? Can, can you afford to not be all in uh, at the, you know, as you had? Well, I think we're all in, Daniel. I mean, you, we're at the cap. We're actually over the, probably over the cap. Um, 
you know, I, I signed uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins to a long-term deal. I signed in the off-season. I signed Zach Hyman to a long-term deal. You know, we signed Cody Cece. I, I, I brought in Fogel for uh, for Ethan Bear. Um, I mean, we're trying to be all in. I mean, I'm I'm trying to be all in. It, it's it's it's. You know, I'm, I'm, so I'm not. When, I'm not sure where you're going with that question. Just in the terms of, are there any prospects or or picks or, or assets that wouldn't be on the table? Could you? Is, is everything on the table? Right now, nobody's on. The, none of those. Wait, why? Why would I? Tra- are you talking a rental? Or are you talking to make a trade and to, tr- to trade to trade our, our 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 top prospects for for a rental to try to bail out of this year? Or are you you t- trying to what, like for help, going? for help this year? For help this year? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I think the answer is in that locker room. I mean, why would I trade a first-round pick or one of our top prospects to, to have somebody give us a little bit of a boost, and then next year we have a press conference and you're asking me about more secondary scoring again or more depth or more depth. The depth has to be built internally. The depth, the depth of this organization has to be the growth, the growth of McLeod, the growth of Yamamoto, the growth of uh, Bouchard, the growth of Broberg, the growth of Skinner, the growth of uh, uh, Carter Savoy, the, the growth of Borgo, the growth of uh, Petrov. That's, 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 how, that's, how, that's how we did it in Detroit. And when I look around, that's how the best teams do it. It's, it's homegrown. It's, it's young people people it's being patient it's it's you know we came here you know signed Jay Woodcroft uh, Woody's done a great job in 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 in, in developing players down there um so uh, you know I think that's that's how you got to get better it's got to be now I understand Connor's 25 and Leon's 26 and would I trade something that's if it's a hockey trade and it's, it's you bring in somebody and he's here for this year and beyond that's a different that's a different story but if, if your question is to me just to, to trade some grade a prospect to give a little bit of a boost and a bump so we can have another press conference next week and then and then that guy goes on and flourishes in another organization somewhere else for for five, six, seven, eight, ten years, and 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 we're back to the market next year because that person we got leaves. I'm not doing that. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you.